When I decided that I wanted to get into IT, I literally looked at job descriptions. I looked at things like, what are their requirements to get this job? Uh, How long will it take me to meet those requirements? And most importantly, how can I learn how to do these things? How can I actually acquire these skills? And it came down to the fact that I wanted to be a systems engineer. So I needed to learn a lot about servers in general. And really in order to do that, I needed to get hands on, but that was really the challenge at the end of the day was that I wasn't a systems engineer and I didn't have exposure to servers. So what I needed to do was I needed to acquire a server. How do I go about doing that? How do I go about picking the type of server that I want to buy in the first place? It really comes down to like, let's just browse eBay and see what our options are. So what we're really talking about in this video is that servers come in many different shapes and sizes, no different from our workstation computers. There's desktops, there's laptops, there's tablets, and there's Raspberry Pis. Well, guess what? Servers have the same types of options to you. And this is going to be an important thing to wrap your head around is we set up what are the different form factors of servers. And we're going to do this from the perspective of eBay in case you want to shop for a server and follow along on your own. Let's go. So as promised, here we are on eBay, and this is where I buy my server equipment when I'm doing home lab or even recording content here for CBT Nuggets. And this is actually where I got my career started, uh, right here on eBay. I, I knew that I wanted to be something engineer, preferably a systems engineer or a network engineer or something like that. And I knew that if I was actually going to be able to sit in an interview and tell people that I know what I'm talking about here, I needed to have the skills to back it up. And the only way you can get those skills is by getting hands on. Now, I know that uh, buying some of these things uh, can be very expensive. You may be looking, well, don't look, don't look at the cryptocurrency miners for a second. Look at the servers here. You may be seeing those prices and going, whoa, wait a minute. That's way out of my ballpark. I didn't buy servers that expensive when I was getting started out. I started out with Dell equipment. I didn't buy servers that expensive when I started out. I started out with Dell equipment, and that's what I'm most familiar with. But a competitor to Dell in this space is also someone like HP. So being that this is a CompTIA playlist, do keep in mind that this is going to be vendor neutral. However, there's no getting around actually using real world examples with specific vendors. And in this case, I'm very comfortable with Dell. Now, what we're talking about here is the shapes and sizes that they come in. And what you're seeing right here on the screen right now is what's called a rack mount server. This is a server that is specifically built to take up the smallest footprint possible uh, and go sliding into a large rack of these types of servers. Now, this is great for environments that have racks and can facilitate all of these different types of servers. And, and they have the big thing to keep in mind there is they have power and air conditioning needs in place to facilitate these servers. Let me show you what I mean by that. I'm going to search for a server real quick, uh, a more affordable one like a Dell R610. Now, as you can see, the prices went down quite a bit. The first thing that I want to draw your attention to, this is going to be a Dell specific thing. But you see this R right there? What do you think that stands for at this point? It stands for rack. That means this is the form factor for Dell devices that are built to go into the servers. And specifically, the 610 series, the 10, denotes at this point, it's pretty old. It's probably about like 10 or 15 years old at this point. But the 6 is also kind of just a a how much space in the rack is this device going to take out and how much power does it bring to the table. Now, without getting too much into it, because we're going to talk about racks a lot more in an upcoming video, I'll tell you right now that the R610 takes up what's called one rack unit. And what this is really equivalent to is it is 1.75 inches tall. That's right, it's wee bitty, right? In fact, hang on one second, one second, watch this. Look, I'm I'm disappearing from the screen because I have one, right? Well, this is an HP, but this is a 1U server. Sorry, I'm so far away from the mic, but you can see, look, 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 look how much space I'm talking about here. This doesn't take up very much space at all. These things are designed, hang on, now I'll put it down so I get close to the mic again. These things are designed so that we can stack many of them on top of each other and it'll suck the air in and blow it right out the back without taking up a very large footprint of space, not from an X to Y plane, but a Z plane. We're talking about vertically stacking these devices and this is why they go into a rack. But you think about it, if we've got 
5, 10, 15 of these. How do you power those? How do you air condition those? Because that's going to generate a lot of heat. And we have content all about those considerations coming up. This is just to introduce to you that there is a rack mounted form factor. And this is probably the most common form factor that you're going to see servers in. Now the flip side of the rack mounted one is going to be the tower server. Let's do like a T630. See that? That's a much bigger device. The T630s, when you see the T on Dell devices right there, guess what the T stands for? It's a tower. Now these tower servers, they really exist when you've got like a small office and this is gonna be something that we need servers in our environment, but we don't have the space or the facility to physically host a rack full of network equipment or network devices, or we simply don't need it. We just need one generic server to, for, to perform different roles in our environment. So we can put this you know, on a sturdy shelf and give it electricity and a network connection, and we're up and running. Now, I will say that these things, they look like a desktop, but they're quite a bit bigger than your standard desktops that you're used to, used to seeing. This is bigger than the basic ATX. This is going to be probably, I don't know, 33 to 50% larger than a standard desktop tower that you're used to seeing. So do keep in mind that they are large and they are heavy, but you don't necessarily, but they clearly don't take up the same amount of footprint space that a stack of servers would take up. Nor do they take up as much electricity because we only got one of them, maybe two of them, nor do they generate as much heat. So this is the ideal solution for a small business environment that still needs a server up and running in it. Again, at least when it comes to working with Dell appliances, you can quickly differentiate a rack server from a tower server either by looking at it or by looking at the model number, an R630 versus a T630. You know that the R630 is gonna be rack mounted. Now, the other type of server that exists, I wanna show you this, is a blade server. This is a great example of one right here. Let me just bring up the big picture. So what's this all about? I mean, if we were thinking about that rack server for a second, I had a, a 1.75 inch tall server that would have two power connections and maybe multiple ethernet connections. Then I'd put another one on top of that, then another one on top of that, then another one on top of that. Think for a second if I had 10 of those rack servers. Well, they wouldn't take up a very large footprint, right? We're talking, you know, what is like 1.75 times 10 inches. We're talking about 17 and a half inches for 10 servers at that point. However, we'd be talking about 20 power connections. We'd be talking about something like maybe 40 ethernet connections at that point to run those servers. And we'd have 10 unique servers all generating their own heat. And that becomes an inefficient usage of space. And this is where blade servers came in to be. What a blade server does, if you can tell from this picture, it's kind of a, a, a janky picture here, is we have one empty chassis. That's kind of what you're looking at here. Is we have, oh, is we have uh, one big chassis when we're looking at the top right of this device and across the top, we just have these empty bays. So with this big chassis, we can plug that big chassis with its two power cords into the wall and its row of fans here. And then we can just slot mini servers or blade servers into it. So now I can see here, how many bays am I looking at here? One, two, three, four, five, 12, 12 bays here. So I can slot 12 blade servers into this chassis yet i only have two power cords and you know maybe four ethernet cables and all of the fan and heat that's generated by these is being handled by the chassis device itself and it becomes a much more efficient way to use space even though it does take up a lot of rack space it takes up less space than 12 servers would take on their own it could potentially consume less electricity it certainly uses less cabling and it becomes an efficient way to actually use your rack space. Now again, the question becomes, do you need 12 servers? Do you need a blade chassis? Or are you fine getting away with just the rack servers? Again, I say this and I mean it, is that rack servers are what's commonly deployed, most commonly deployed in today's environments. And when I got started working with servers, when I went out and bought my own server, what did I buy? I bought a Dell 
R710. Old Faithful is what this is right here. Now, I'm not going to get into what makes this server this server. We have a dedicated skill where we talk about the components of servers, and that's where we'll start to really shine in on this. But this is uh, the kind of server that I bought at first. Now, I paid a lot more than 140 bucks, you know, five or six years ago. I think I paid like 400 bucks, but it's still uh, very affordable. These aren't 1.75 inches tall. These are a little bit taller. They're actually twice as taller, so they're closer to like three and a half inches tall, but it's still very form factor, uh, all about going into a rack itself. This is a very rack mountable server here. And you can just tell by looking at it that its sole purpose is to take up the least amount of real estate vertically, but go deep and push all of the components and suck all of the air in and push it out the back that way. So this has been under, oh wait, I forgot one of the most important ones. How could I? The Raspberry Pi. Yeah, look at this little guy. Hang on right here. Yeah, this little guy right here. Why can't this thing be a server? You know, it, it doesn't take a whole lot to run a DHCP server or a DNS server. In fact, in many technologists' homes today, they run something called a pie hole. This is a DNS server that blocks trackers and ads and, and unwanted content um, from happening internally in, in your environment. They run those servers on these little bitty Raspberry Pis right here. So this is the Raspberry Pi 4 that I've got here. Uh, you know, pretty powerful. Four cores, eight gigs of RAM. Can run two 4K... Uh, monitors off of the HDMI ports here. So, you know, hey, kudos to Raspberry Pi. That is a very valid server, even though it lacks some things like redundant power, redundant Ethernet, things like that. However, there are components that you can buy and add on to your Raspberry Pis and make them that way. Still, it is somewhat common to see Raspberry Pis serve some sort of role in some environments today. So I just wanted to make sure I threw that one out there that you can run server services on your Raspberry Pi, even though you may not want to do that in an enterprise environment. So now we understand server form factors. We've got the tower servers, the rack servers, the blade servers, and even the little old Raspberry. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.